chaos has become commonplace in America's supply chains. Executives say that almost every day a new disruption emerges, making it harder and harder to find a way out of this crisis. Here in the US and pretty much everywhere in the world, grocers are having a hard time keeping store shelves full. Given that conditions worsen by the day at the ports where congestion is creating gigantic piles of containers to the point some of them are overflowing into city streets, crushing cars and provoking accidents, billions of dollars worth of goods are now stuck and out of reach. Shipping delays mean that some stores are only going to get their products after almost a month of waiting. That situation is aggravating local and nationwide shortages and making consumers extremely worried. Unfortunately, industry experts argue this is going to be the new normal for the foreseeable future, and there's only so much store owners can do to cope with shrinking inventories and empty shelves. Many of them are having to come up with creative ways of making the store appealing and seemingly organized for customers. They have no choice but to adapt to what some say is the beginning of a painful and extended crisis. Recent reports have been describing that some grocery store owners are turning to old school tricks of the industry, or even developing new ones to hide the gaps on the shelves. That includes placing products in unlikely places across the store. Consumers reportedly said on social media that they have witnessed large beer boxes piled into aisles previously reserved for prepackaged meals. Others revealed they've seen boxes of chocolate filling placed next to fresh fish and produce. One of them posted a picture of refrigerated displays stocked with shelf-stable products such as sauces and salad dressings. In essence, grocers are doing all sorts of unexpected things just for consumers to walk in and not see empty shelves. We've been impacted by some patchy disruption to our deliveries, one store owner explained. Our teams are always trying to make sure our stores look as attractive as possible, and sometimes managers come up with creative ways of making sure that shelves are full. The truth is that the same situation is happening all across the globe, with consolidated businesses experiencing acute product shortages at a time that consumer demand has never been stronger. But manufacturing has never been slower due to a historic shortage of labor, work restrictions, extreme weather, and power shortages at plants. The mismatch between supply and demand is also making the price of the few products remaining in stock much more expensive, especially when it comes to food. A recent survey found that nearly 20% of consumers said last month they couldn't buy food staples because they had been out of stock for longer than two weeks. On the other hand, food retailers affirmed that they're doing everything in their power to ensure inventories and they're trying to maintain their customer experience the best they can to remain competitive. The survey also found that roughly 58% of consumers said supply chain disruptions, product shortages, and shipping delays have made shopping significantly more stressful, while 41% said product shortages and significant shipping and delivery delays made them abandon a brand, according to data released by New York-based trade association ICSC, which represents retail businesses. For grocers, that means they have to at least try to make stores look well-stocked, clean, and organized. Some of them are having to take quite desperate measures, such as filling up a whole aisle with items that would normally have a small space on one shelf. Others are hiding the gaps with empty product packaging, such as sandwich boxes or even cardboard dummies, a strategy that always existed but now consumers are not only noticing, but also finding it quite problematic because it's happening so frequently, as explained by Catherine Shuttleworth, founder and chief executive of retail consulting firm Get Savvy Marketing Limited. 
A spokesperson for Tesco, which was seen displaying cardboard photos of items in the place of products in some stores, seemingly tried to smooth out the situation and said the use of cutouts wasn't linked to worsening shortages amid growing supply chain challenges, but that the images were being used to help staffers to visualize layouts to reconfigure the product displays. The use of cardboard placeholders makes operations easier for supermarkets, many of which are struggling to hire and retain staff, Ms. Shuttleworth said. It's probably quicker and definitely cheaper to put cardboard in than it is to do anything else, such as reorganizing a store's aisles or moving stock to fill the empty space. Placeholders can also shield staff from shopper inquiries into the whereabouts of items, she added. Meanwhile, other grocers have decided to use out-of-stock signs to fill empty shelves, but customers exposed on social media that in some branches the, the endless rows of signs are making stores look like they're in some sort of post-apocalyptic scenario. On Twitter, thousands of users compiled in a recent thread photos of depleted supermarket shelves and other funny and odd solutions that store owners have been finding to cope with the situation. Many have been making fun of shelves, displaying photos of food instead of the real thing, and calling out retailers for faking it so shamelessly. The thread began when one used posted pictures of rows of fake asparagus at Tesco. The post called the attention of many other users who started to show what they were seeing at their local stores and their recent shopping experiences. Another one spotted some cardboard carrots and sarcastically captioned, yum yum. One of the pictures showed freezers completely filled with fake cartons of milk. Now, while people laugh about the situation online to take some of the pressure off and make the situation less difficult to deal with, New stats show that consumers are actually becoming increasingly worried. According to the Food Industry Association's latest U.S. Grocery Shopper Trends Tracker, more than half of consumers surveyed, or nearly 53%, are concerned about extensive shortages and rising prices. At this point, even big supermarket brands that have their own shipping systems are not escaping from product shortages, despite having a wide network of suppliers, capital, and space for extra inventory. The shopping experience continues to be disrupted as the crisis intensifies. That has led some larger chains to try to secure additional warehouse space to store extra inventory ahead of the holidays. Some will be cutting back on discounts to ease consumer demand. Kroger Co., the largest grocery chain in the U.S., recently announced that it increased its safety stock of items in more than 70 categories, sourced additional warehouse space to house the extra products, and spread out the ports it uses for imports. Walmart also revealed it has diverted ships to less congested ports while hiring 20,000 supply chain workers and automated warehouse operations wherever possible. Sadly, the vast majority of small grocery retailers have way less flexibility and continue to struggle to restock inventories. They're having to plan what items will show up on shelves on any given day. I've had over a decade of retail experience, and this is like nothing I've experienced or seen before, highlighted Latalia McCarthy, general manager of the Dill Pickle Food Co-op in Chicago, which she said is dealing daily with deliveries arriving incomplete or not at all. We've made a huge effort in making sure we're not having these huge gaps. Dill Pickle has been filling up freezers with products most people aren't expecting to see in its cool section, including tofu, typically placed on shelves in the store's Asian section, and shelf-stable or ambient products items such as oat and soy milk. But there's definitely a risk you take, like, am I going to have to convince someone that they have to keep this refrigerated now? McCarthy continued. Store managers disclosed that they're bringing back some of the oldest techniques used by stores running low on produce, 
to other sections of the store, facing up or moving a few items on a shelf to the front so customers can't notice all the empty space behind. They're also increasing the number of facings or rows a certain item is given on a shelf to cover gaps. For instance, in Newton, Massachusetts, the owner of the Walnut Food Market, Matt Santapio, admitted that many items that he would usually give a single shelf spot to now are spread across two or three to hide some of the gaps left by out-of-stock or unavailable goods. The dill pickle has also changed shelving layouts to avoid empty space, McCarthy said. If we see holes, we'll all of a sudden make our best sellers have three or four slots, rather than just one or two. But facing up doesn't solve all problems, noted John Rosa, the general manager of Weaver's Way Cooperative Association in Philadelphia. It gets to the point where it looks silly. Say, if you're walking down the aisle and you see seven or eight facings of the same product, he said. Weaver's Way isn't troubled about leaving gaps, Rosa continued. He says the store uses signs to indicate a product is out of stock and directs customers to ask staff about substitutes. The store also briefs staff on which items may be in or out at the start of each shift, he explained. For Mr. Santapio, the owner of Walnut Food Market, leaving some shelves empty is a strategy that aims to keep customers coming back. He started working in the business in January 2020, right before the health crisis started. Back then, many new customers were visiting the store for the first time since it was remodeled. He said that several imports, such as Smarties Candy and Cadbury Chocolate, have been incredibly hard to find. and. The display boxes have been empty for several months, but still he decided to keep them on display. For certain things, I'm afraid people will come in, see it's not here, and wind up not coming back for it, he said. Keeping the box out shows I'm making an effort to get them in and not giving up on them. Those who have ignored economists' warnings over the past few months will probably start to regret that decision now. It's probably now too late to start stockpiling food and other goods given that shortages are becoming more widespread with each passing week. However, what we're currently experiencing is not the worst of this crisis just yet. Problems are compounding, and another ravaging winter threatens to aggravate congestion at ports and lead to further disruptions in food production. We will have some extremely troubled times ahead of us, and the coming challenges are going to be much harder than most people think.